Processing and HSQC Spectrum for the Donahue Research Group. When you have a list of characterized spectra, you will notice that one ends in the number four and has the first four letters of HSQC. This is an HSQC spectrum. By double clicking it to open it, you will get this screen if you've not opened it before. This is okay. Click that bottom bar that's slightly pink to Ended, and you should see a little cursor start blinking right at the very edge and type XFB and hit enter. This begins the auto processing of the spectrum. As you can see, it has now auto processed and you can see these little spots for where the peaks are. However, it's used the internal spectrum instead of the external ones, which is not what we wanted to do. So you will put your mouse over the spectrum at the top, not down here, up here, right click and hit external projection, and instead of the experiment number, I'd be reading 24, we're going to call in the correct experiment number for the nucleus it's looking at. Looking at the axis down here, we can see it ranges from negative 2 to 12, which means this is a proton spectrum. Looking at the list of possible experiment numbers, we can see that 20 reads ZG30, meaning this is our proton spectrum. So our experiment number should be set to 20, and you can hit OK. You can see now that it's called in the correct spectrum, and it looks much more like a typical proton NMR spectrum should. You must then do the same on the left, where you put it on, the, hang it on the side, right out here, right click, external projection. In this case, we can see that it ranges from zero all the way down to probably around 200, meaning this is a carbon NMR spectrum. Looking at our list of possible NMR spectrum, we can see that 21 reads ZG PG30 and is our carbon NMR spectrum. So the experiment number gets set to 21 instead of 24. And you can hit enter or OK. You can see now we have much nicer peaks. If you zoom in on the region, you can see that these peaks don't quite like these spots, which we will be referring to as peaks, don't quite line, line up with the center of the peaks for the proton on spectrum. If we zoom in further, we can see that it's pretty good at lining up with the carbon. By hovering your mouse over and scrolling down, so towards yourself on the scroll wheel of the mouse, you can make these peaks smaller. What you're looking at here when you scroll in and out is something like a topographical map. So if we actually take this hit this pseudo color mode, you can see that it looks a lot more like a topical optical map you would see on an actual map wood with these little colored lines. We don't actually want this. It's purely for illustrative purposes, so click it again to exit that. Click this little target to just go to contour, which is what we do want. To adjust these peaks so that they do line up with the correct ones, what you will do is to hit this little bdoop symbol right here, which is for to hit the one next to that little bdoop signal for calibration. This is for phasing. This is for calibration. For a 2D spectrum, you do not touch peak picking or integration. So we'll hit calibration. This allows you to say, okay, the center of the peak for the proton, if we read what it says next to this col COL, which is short for column, so it's reading the PPM of that column where your crosshairs are, is 2.7116. So then we go to the center of this peak. So this little spot right here and say, yeah, this is approximately center. Click it and we will type 2.7116 and hit OK. 
you can see now that the center of this peak is much more closer and better aligned to the actual center of the proton peak on the spectrum above. We can hit A to full view. If you notice, you will have spectra dots in blue and dots in green. The dots in blue correspond to CH2s. The dots in green will be CH3s and CHs. In this case, it makes sense because this is a pair of substituted ring. So these are both green because they are both protons on that benzene ring. HSQC shows direct attachment. So this little dot means that this proton for this peak right here belongs to U and is directly bonded to the carbon responsible for this signal. To print, you will go to File, Print, Active Window, or you just hit the print button. Make sure that these button, these checkboxes are where they were from last time. And you will look for the 13C HSQC underscore MGD template and hit OK. Once it gets pulled up, you will see that yes, yes it does look like it's pulled in the correct spectra. However, these dots are far, far too large. So what you will do is you hit click and hit 1D, 2D edit and use this up down arrow like you would a scroll. So by moving your mouse, clicking and holding, dragging your mouse upwards, you increase the view on the topographical map. So you're looking, if you were looking down at a globe that had all those bumps on it, you would be looking at taller and taller bumps and only the tippy top of the bumps would be appearing as dots on the spectrum. Let's say that this one is a bit too, this top spectrum is a bit too short for our taste. That's when this box in the middle here comes in. You will notice that it has little check boxes for top, bottom, left, and right. You will only ever touch the top or the left. By clicking top, it means that these actions will be applied to the NMR spectrum you've pulled in on top of this grid. So if we click this one and click and drag, we can make this peak taller or we can make it shorter. We aim for just right where it's not going off the page, but it's nice and tall so we can see it easily too. If you click the left, you can then control the carbon spectrum as you can see here. Again, we want it set so that the peaks are just at the edge of the page, but not going off. The solvent peak is allowed to go off the page. We don't care about the solvent peak. We know it's there. We know it's the solvent peak, and that's all we need to know. We then hit close. You can go to file print and file export, and it will be saved as your notebook number, space HS. QC and hit save and OK. You can then hit print and you'll close. It will inevitably ask you to save changes. Under no circumstances should you say yes. You do not change the template that has been pre-assigned. So you always, once you've hit print and print, you hit close and hit no. And thus you can move on to the other two, the NMR.